A Wednesday matinee for the finale in Kansas City. Steven Strasburg looks to improve on his perfect record and lead the first place Nats to another series win. Thousands of kids at the K today, Kauffman Stadium, Kansas City. It's a rubber game of what's been a very interesting and well played series so far. The Nats and the Royals, despite last night's tough one to swallow, the Nats are still having a very good road trip. Four out of five, the run differential good, the starters are stingy, and the Nats keep scoring early in ball games. In fact, in a moment, a little more on some of the power that has enabled them to do that. Closers and baseball players sometimes have to have very short memories. Yeah, defensive backs, too. When you get burned, you got to forget about it. And it's a new game today, and that's why you play 162. So here we go. Good road trip working. Forget about yesterday. Yeah, and closers are the ultimate guys with that. They can get a 1 2 3 ninth one night and give up five hits the next night. Jonathan Papelbon has had that sequence here. Yeah, and I mean, some guys got to look at Jonathan Papelbon the first game of this series. So they had a pretty good game plan of what they were going to do last night. And when you're talking about a team in the Royal that came from behind in eight postseason games last year, seven of them multi-run deficits. These guys have a heart of a champion. They know what to do. So they saw Papelbon in game one. They got a good idea of what he featured. So game two, they had a good game plan. This place got rocking. These guys know how to come back. That's why they have jewelry on their fingers. Yeah, the Royals are great come from behind team they make contact they put the ball in play their speed some of it off the bench came into play Michael A. Taylor valiant effort to try to save that and get it into extra innings last night but it just didn't work out so today is a new day it's still a good road trip and the Nats have Steven Strasburg and who's pitching better in baseball than him well not too many guys a few come to mind but Steven Strasburg the way he's been lately has just been unbelievable and I think it's all about that fourth pitch that he's been featuring but if you go back to Friday in St. Louis had a little bit of a rough start the Cardinals came out swinging but to Steven Strasburg's credit he settled out he got into a rhythm he struck out six of his last nine batters the changeup was devastating so he battled he fought he stayed with it he's 4-0 for the first time in his career and he's absolutely dealing. I was more impressed with his last outing than any else this season. Yeah, so it's great to see Steven back on the National League ranks as far as pitchers with the wins, the strikeouts, 5-1 to one strikeout to walk ratio, by the way, the ERA and the very low opponent's batting average. Now, for the Royals, Chris Medlin going today. He's usually a control guy who works pretty fast. But the former Brave has been walking some people this year. Yeah, he walked five his last starts. He's walked 16 on the season, struck out 16 on the season. So you're probably thinking be patient with him, get him in the strike zone. Tremendous athlete on the mound, could feel his position very well. He's got that front hip sinker thing. We compared him as a Brave to Greg Maddox a lot. Got a good changeup, works fast. So, I mean, they got their work cut out for him again today. But a series win, we go to Chicago, and it's another woohoo road trip. Yeah. Now, last night, the Nats got Chris Young out of the game pretty early, hitting him well, meddling. Who knows? That could happen again today. But this offense is showing signs of life. Jason Worth has really come alive. Anthony Rendon and even Danny Espinosa now. Yeah, and what I like about the offense is when somebody goes south, somebody picks them up. So it's, you got three or four guys going good, three or four guys going bad. They've done a nice job of picking each other up and keeping the line moving this year so far. And if Bryce Harper gets things straightened out, look out, everybody. So the Nats on this road trip are hitting the ball for power. They've hit nine home runs in five games. By the way, 32 on the year, fifth in the league. They've only given up 15. Not a bad differential there as well. A rubber game in Kansas City. Straight ahead.
Baseball on Masson, brought to you by PNC Bank for the Achiever in You. And by Ocean City, Maryland, let us show you a good time in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. What a day in Kansas City. The Nats on the road are 10 and 4. The Royals at home are 9 and 4. Beautiful day. 67 degrees. And there's your weather. One cloud somewhere out to the north of us. Here's the Nats offense hitting 238, 10th of the league in runs and 5th in home runs. Jason Worth coming alive. He likes interleague ball, doesn't he? 37 and 101 career. Including another bomb here last night when he went two for four. So the Nats are warming things up with the bats. Wilson Ramos had a great night. Ryan Zimmerman gets the DH spot today with Clint Robinson at first base. The Nats know Chris Medlin signed with the Royals as a free agent. Three and three career against the Nationals. Yeah, fastball slider curveball change. Fifth start of the year for Medlin. 15th time facing the Nats. Last start on April 29th. Took the one to nothing loss against King Felix in the Mariners five and a third one run on just one hit five walks though three strikeouts 103 pitches just 57 for strikes. So the defense for the Royals today Gordon Kane Dice in the outfield Escobar Mustakas left side and Fonte Hosmer right side and Drew Butera behind the plate. And Drew Butera he's been around with a bunch of major league ball clubs good receiver. Calls a good game and he gets Medlin who is lifetime 41 and 24 making his 74th career start fifth against the Nats game notes for you. So Steven Strasburg the first Washington Nationals pitcher with a 4 0 April Daniel Murphy RBIs in five in a row. The guy is amazing to watch on a daily basis and then a four hit game last night for Alcides Escobar. So in this series he's five for nine with an RBI and two runs. And he is hot eight for his last 14. Murphy four for eight in this series and hitting 500 with runners in scoring position. In fact he has the most at bats against against Chris Medlin of any net 25. 116 Central in Kansas City. First pitch to Michael A. Taylor. Low for a ball. A hit a walk in the series and that skips into the mid of Butera. 21st year in the big leagues for C.B. Buckner who has the plate. Jim Reynolds first Manning Gonzalez second and there's your crew chief field and Colbreth in the rocking chair for a mezzanine at third base. Pardon me a matinee not a mezzanine. We're sitting in the mezzanine and you could kind of see that coming as Moustakas laid back and Taylor is going to go to second base. A top spin grounder that kind of played the third baseman. We'll see how they rule it. He got caught in between here. Chopper off the plate. Yeah, in no man's land. You either got to really come get that or take a step back. And Mustakas was caught right in between. You see the hesitation. Now he's at the top spin's mercy. And then the ball just kind of trickles into left field and heads up by Michael Taylor to get to second. And they're ruling out an error, and I think that's the right call. Yeah, his first of the year, only the ninth against the Royals, who started the day moments ago with just eight errors like your Nats. So here's Anthony Rendon. Like I said on the year, Medlin, 16 walks and 16 strikeouts. You have to get him in the zone. Ball diving down and in, he got the call. The count's even 1 1. <laughs> did, did you hear the Nats dugout? I mean, yeah, I think you could on TV too. They didn't leg it. CB Buckner not known for being a good ball strike, guys. You have to be honest, it's the truth. Medlin trying to pitch Rendon inside to keep him from moving the runner. That's a breaking ball up in the zone. 85 on the slider, 1 and 2. Chris Medlin originally a 10th rounder by the Braves back in 06. Anthony's swinging well. Five games in a row, nine of his last 11. On base 10 of 11.
And a one two pitch. Bryce Harper on deck. Sitting on a powder cake, we think. It's about to go off at any time as soon as he starts making some contact. This would be a good five day sequence for him to do that. Rendon will move the runner. He might do more than that and make it to first off the glove of Infante. Could be another error. Ball was hit sharply. Well, good at bat by Rendon. He moved Michael Taylor to third. That was the objective, but now he gets the bonus plan as he's on first, and the Royals known for their defensive kick two here in the top of the first. And maybe, just maybe, Manny Gonzalez had something to do with blocking Omar Infante's vision right there on the ground ball. Do you see him jump out of the way? Yeah. You know, as a second baseman, sometimes you can lose that ball for a split second in the umpire. And the sure handed Infante makes the second error already in the game. E5, E4. Who's next? E3, Eric Hosmer? We'll see. No, he Here's Bryce. He He's pretty good. He doesn't kick him. One for nine in this series, five strikeouts. Nothing like a pitcher off the stretch after the first batter of the game. And now facing a corner situation with nobody out for Bryce, who has 24 RBIs. Still solid with runners in scoring position. A chance to grab. A big lead early here. Bryce pulling off that one, 91 diving 0 and 2. The DH is the cleanup man, Ryan Zimmerman next. Bryce is two for 13 with a homer career against Medlin with a couple of walks. I'll tell you what, Kurt, when you're struggling like Bryce is right now, a sack fly feels like a triple. Yeah. So if he can get something out there far enough, hey, he'll take the base hit, the double, whatever. But, you know, little things to get you feeling good about yourself again, to get you back locked in. It's not always the obvious. Target away. Harper to center. Not deep at all. Kane coming in and the ball falls in front of him and the Nats lead one nothing. Bryce Harper's second flare to fall in in this series. This one has RBI number 25 attached to it. Well, you heard somebody say that's a knock and absolutely you're known for your power. You take a big hack. A lot of times outfielders will take a jab step back and in the day game it falls. I said just tread water until you get relocked. You'll take anything you can until you figure it out. And a smile from Bryce Harper. Love it. Line moving here in the top of the first. There goes that first inning scoring thing again. Hosmer gave him a little pat on the arm. I know your pain and know what you're feeling here. <laughs> Every player does. First RBI of May. Here's Ryan Zimmerman. He's had a great series. Four hits, some extra base hits. Breaking ball outside gets him ahead. Ryan, three doubles here in Kansas City. Just like that, an unearned run off the board, and another one sitting out at second base. Low. Blocked by Butera. And with the ball trickling to the third base side, Rendon stayed. Let's go inside the numbers with Jeep. The Nets have done it again. Another first inning run plus 17. Nine first inning runs on the first six games of this trip. Two oh it's in there. Daniel Murphy waiting. Target goes in now. 
It's up and in. Did I say there goes a no hitter? I forgot. And there goes the no hitter. Thank you. Got early. Wake up, San Francisco. I mean, it is 1:23 local time. I was on. celebrating Bryce's knock in my mind. I was happy for him. That's to the outer edge. Perfect pitch by Medlin. Ryan three for 17 with seven strikeouts against this guy. Nissan looks at strike two swinging back. I don't know maybe those seven strikeouts against this pitcher by Ryan. Keeps Dusty from doing anything with the runners. You don't want to run out of an inning before Murphy comes up. They're holding. Bryce had a big lead. He was really watching Rendon. Crowd here today. This place looks like it's going to be sold out. A lot of kids are here. A lot. 3 2, nobody out. Zimmerman, good swing there. Like 15,000 kids here today is what I heard. So that would be. Several thousand buses, several hundred buses. Lively atmosphere. Nats trying to quiet him down. Zimmerman hacks one, and that's fair right over the third base bag. Scoring is Rendon. Bryce coming to third. Bob Henley holds him, and Ryan Zimmerman has his fourth double of this series. Two nothing, Washington. So Ryan is a DH in his career five for thirty eight and he said forget that stat I'm coming out swinging today so now six for thirty nine a double in RBI and he paused for a second to see if it was fair foul. Fielding Culbreth rules it fair and that's up two to nothing nice swing Ryan Zimmerman. I know that what is that. that base RBI that number nine for Ryan. Two errors two hits infield in with one of the best hitters in the game in the box right now. Murphy that's fair that's going to make it for nothing into the right field corner. The ball gets away from Dyson Murphy's going to third and the Royals if that's ruled an error and it should be have made three already four on the board for the Nationals. Line is moving. Daniel hits Murphy what do. I mean you're surprised when he doesn't get a hit at this point. It's news when he doesn't. It's almost like he knew that curveball was coming. He said he's faced him a long time Carp, and a lot of the history against Medlin. And then it gets all weird down there for Gerard Dyson rolling around. That has to be a double in there. The third error here already in the top of the first for a team known for its defense. That's just weird. So Murphy gets two RBIs. The runners were going to score no matter what. Dyson's first of the year. Jason Worth, runner at third, nobody out. Infield still in. Yeah, Murphy, six for 25 against Medlin prior to that at bat, and he just doubled his RBI total against him. Worth is five out of 18 against the right hander with a home run. And by the way, Murphy just added to his 500 batting average with runners in scoring position. Hits. One hit, by the way, for Murphy behind the league leader, Gene Segura, who has 37. Well, they've made eight errors in 26 games, and then they make three today in the span of five hitters. Two and one big gap right center way upstairs. Jason Worth seventh for his last 22 with six RBIs. 
There's a big right-hander somewhere down there in the dugout that's digging all this. But how about Jason Worth last night? Fifth home run, a bomb. To left center field off Dylan G, a guy that he had some history with. Three two. Worth up the middle. It's five to nothing. And that ball getting to the gap. He's thinking two over to cut it off. Lorenzo Kane. And the hits keep coming for the Nationals. Four in a row, three doubles in a row. Some good coffee in that third base dugout right now. Nat's ready to play. Jason Worth getting on top of what looked like a hanging slider for Medlin. Shoots the gap, hustling around first base. And watch the head first slide into second. Boys are ready to play. Five nothing Nats. Wilson Ramos, three for four in his return to the lineup last night with an RBI. And all of his hits were to the other side of the ballpark. Still nobody out. 26 pitches worth. CB Buckner thought about it, called it a strike, and the dugout didn't like that one either. Ramos has hit safely in 12 of his 16 games this year. Target in. That hit something. Evidently the bat and it's 0 2. It's human nature when you're on the side to see a low pitch and to chirp in the dugout, but right now. Everybody in that third base dugout with a 5 nothing lead should be cheering C.B. Buckner when he calls one low because if Steven Strasburg gets that call. Gets that call, yeah. Good luck. Yeah, with the change up. Hey, good call. Stay the right hook. there. Don't change a thing. 0 oh, 2 to Ramos. Breaking ball. That thing was hanging. Wilson geared up for everything and anything that could happen on 0 2 couldn't quite do much with it but well he's been good too. 38 runs in the first inning this year. We well, better come out of that bullpen with your A stuff if you're facing this ball club or they'll jump you. There's another breaking ball that was kind of sitting middle away. And Ramos stays alive at 0-2. Chris Medlin coming into this game, one and two with a 487 ERA. Fifth start. Opponents hitting 243. Right now the Nats are four out of six against him. Telling you, you're playing a ball club that won't quit. We saw that last night. So it, it, for the Nats right now, yeah. never enough. Yeah. Pedal to the metal and step on somebody's throat here in the first. Big gap left center for Ramos. He IDs the changeup. It's a good take to get it to ball one. Making him work and work and work here. Ramos 21 for 61. Looking for RBI number 10. Way inside, two and two. Way inside, ball three, and here comes Butera. Got him 0-2 and started nibbling. This is not the Chris Medlin I remember. Before his second Tommy John surgery with the Braves, he was a guy that was 
masterful with his command of the strike zone. Remember all the front hip sinkers he would throw lefties. You know, maybe he's just having a rough day today, especially after he gave up just one hit his last start. But they're getting that thing ready down there for somebody. Yeah, the tarps coming off the bullpen mound, and Danny Duffy is up. 3-2 pitch. Ramos stays alive. Yeah, that's the number eight man on deck who spent a lot of time in this Kansas City organization, Clint. Three two and Ramos having quite an AB here. Eleventh pitch coming. Look at these pitches all over the place in this at bat. And he finally gets Ramos on a pitch down and away. And some Bronx cheers in Kansas City, Missouri. One out. Clint Robinson, dramatic swing Sunday in St. Louis. Oh, I just want to listen to it. Just such a sweet sound. First home run of the year for Clint. And it was a big one. Clint Robinson drafted by the Royals in 08, 25th round. His problem was, and there's a pitch in the dirt, and over to third goes Worth on a wild pitch. So another runner at third base, fewer than two outs. Boy. This is not one they're going to put on the highlight reel. The Royals for their defense this inning. It's been uncharacteristic of Ned Yost's ball club, to say the least. Danny Duffy is warming up as quick as he could. Back to Clint Robinson in the Royals organization from 2008, actually 2007, until they put him on waivers in March of 13. He got four entire at bats in four games, and that was in 2012. His problem, he's a first baseman, and Billy Butler and another kid came along by the name of Hosmer were in front of him. Two zero pitch. Robinson to center. That ball hit well. Kane turned the wrong way the first time. Grabs it. Worth can dance home, and the Nats have six runs. Clint Robinson, a great swing for his fifth RBI of the year. A good at bat. Stayed in the middle of the field. You were wondering if it was going to be more than a sack fly, but Clint Robinson will take the sack fly. RBI six nothing Nats. And the number nine batter, Danny Espinoza, is up. Two for ten career against Medellin. First pitch, right side, Hosmer to Medellin, who retires the last three hitters, but the first six all touched home plate. With their bats and with their feet. Rice got the uh, RBI hit. Zimmerman, Murphy, Worth. What an inning.
Zimmerman, Murphy, Worth, and Robinson all checked in with RBIs after that. Six runs, three earned for the Nats. Here come the Royals, fifth in the American League at hitting. 13th in runs, 15th in homers. Lorenzo Cain, though, warming things up, 9 for 26 on his hitting streak. In this series, he's 3 for 9. Only two Royals in the lineup today. Kendrys Morales and Omar Infante have faced Steven Strasburg. Who in his last start held the cards to two earned runs over seven. That was on April 29th in St. Louis. Struck out six of the last nine Cardinals he faced. So last start he threw the fastball 50% of the time at average 95. Slider 16%, curveball 16%, and the change was devastating. He threw it 18% of the time. Escobar five for nine with an RBI. Couple of runs scored against the Nats. Stevens' first fastball misses. Six run lead, but you got to pitch like it's 0 0. Stick to your game plan, fill up the strike zone, let your defense work behind you. All the cliches, but get into that rhythm early. And the last thing you want to do is put on base runners for free. And none of the three have been close. Steven Strasburg had only walked eight batters in 36 innings. And there's your defense behind Steven today. Uh, Clint Robinson playing first, really the only change. There he is, sack fly. Everybody on defense hitting the first. Moustakis. The biggest hit of this series for the Royals when he tied it pinch hitting last night is only a B in the first two games. The nursing a left thumb. That misses. And if you're the Royals you're down by six and your part of your game is stealing bases you don't change a thing here in the first you run. That's your game. Keep running. A lot of teams will shut it down down by six meaning you don't want to make outs you want to play conservative. But if your style is running the bases aggressively, you keep doing it. But right now, you don't have to because Steven Strasburg's not throwing strikes. Yeah, and he's missing big. Stock has driven 82 runs last year at 304 in the World Series. Ninety four with action away from the lefty. Whatever Wilson Ramos said, it worked. <laughs> and the stat that I love about Strasburg dating back to last August 8th, 10 and 2 with a 202 ERA. But listen to this 132 strikeouts and just 16 walks coming into the day since August 8th of last year. That's ridiculous. Inside the numbers, Nats 9 and 0 during that time. Two two runner at first, short lead by Escobar. Oh. 
CB Buckner gave up on that curveball. It buckled him. I mean, this has to be right down the middle of the pitch track. I don't know where this is. Strasburg gets the pop up. Anthony Rendon fighting the sun makes the one handed grab. You can look at the player's shadows and see that it's coming in from just to the right of behind home plate, right in his line of sight. A big out, and Kane with Hosmer the next two. Kane three for nine RBI in this series. He ended it with that drive to left center last night. That touched off a wild celebration here. The Royals were about to lose their seventh game in their last eight before they made that dramatic comeback. Team that came from behind eight times last postseason, so you know they don't give up. They're never out of it. That's unbelievable. You don't win a championship by giving in and giving up. And seven of those comebacks were multi-run deficits. So these guys don't go away. Keen hitting 240. There's the change up from Strasburg and Kerb. I was thinking about this after his last start in St. Louis. You know, most of the time as a hitter, you gear up for the fastball and you have to adjust and you wait for the change up. But in Strasburg's case, it's such a power change, you almost have to gear up for the change up, if that makes any sense. It's 90 miles an hour at times. So even if you're fooled, it can still be by you since it's such a powerful change up. Yeah. Meaning, say a guy throws 92 and his changeup is 82. I can stride, keep my hands back. Oh, right. there's the changeup and flip it out there somewhere. But if you stride, keep your hands back on Strasburg because you're geared up for 95 and it's an 89 mile hour changeup, you might not be able to fire off a swing. It's by you. It's something you really don't think about when you think about hitting a changeup. O2 still. Swing and a miss. 90 down and away. Is he throwing his slider 90? Yeah, that was a slider. Wow. Nissan will track it. Watch the subtle movement going away from Kane. Dirty. Love to know what Wilson Ramos said. Maybe slow down, stay closed. All the typical things you see from a power pitcher early, they get a little antsy. But ever since Ramos went out there, he's been locked in. Hosmer on base five times in the series. Three hits, two walks. Third in the American League with 33 hits. Behind Manny Machado and Dustin Pedroia. I'll tell you what, Manny Machado played shortstop last night. He turned a double play. He threw one about a million to first. I mean, he's almost too close now to first base with his arm playing <laughs> shortstop. He's hit. Bryce Harper up with it on two hops, stopping at second. Escobar. That'll bring in Kendry's Morales, the DH. And how about Masson with all the players of the month? Manny Machado, Bryce Harper, Jake Arietta, and Jordan Zimmerman. <laughs> Morales from the left side of the plate, 11 for 71. Hitting 208 overall. He is one for three career against Steven Strasburg. 
And he hits a fly ball to left for Jason Worth. He's looking into the sun a bit as he approaches the line and makes that grab. So Strasburg puts up the zero. Michael A. let off once. He'll do it again. Geico highlights if you missed the first inning, and boy, did you miss it. I mean, if you missed the first inning, we're going to show it to you again. Or if you forgot about it, just let you watch the line move. I mean, there's not a whole lot to say. A lot of fastballs up, a lot of curveballs up, a lot of hustle on the bases, a lot of helmets flying off. I mean, every, everything. Nine hitters, six runs, and here we go again. That ball Taylor hit a lot of top spin took a couple of hops in. The ball ended up playing the third baseman Mike Moustakas. That got the whole thing going. And whatever seat you were in for the first inning you better be in it right now. Same seat. Last time three years ago at Camden Yards. For the Royals in three errors. And those were not fly balls lost in the sun. I'll tell you what, when Stockton is there, he got caught in between on a top spin hopper. And Fonte lost the ball in the umpire, been there, done that. And then Dyson, I don't know, he's used to playing right field in this park, so. He's had some adventures out there the last couple of days. Sunglasses on the back of his ball cap right now. Well, like he said, the sun's off to the side, so he doesn't need him. 2 2. <laughs> Taylor looks at a fastball and strikes out for the 31st time this year. Two K's for Medlin, and he's retired four straight. Bud and Burger Packs are back. They're presented by Budweiser. They're on sale right now. Get a Thursday, Friday, Saturday game ticket, plus a beer and burger starting at just $35. Some restrictions apply. Visit nationals.com slash Bud and Burger. Anthony Rendon. Hot shot up the middle first time. Misplayed by Infante with the umpire Manny Gonzalez crossing in front of him because there was a runner at first. And Rendon pops it up on the infield. Now it's Escobar battling the sun and he'll yield as the breeze blows it over to Omar Infante. There's a pretty big breeze been coming in from the left field corner. Bit of a crosswind right now.
And here's Bryce who has two hits in the series now and 10 at bats with an RBI number 25. He's only one RBI off the league lead still Anthony Rizzo with 26. Going into today. Tell you what, I've been bearing down on his at bats trying to figure it out, and I'm just not seeing anything. Maybe a little less balanced than normal and, and keeping his feet underneath him, but maybe just chalk it up to being baseball. You go through those streaks. Dusty Baker's been through them. Jock Jones knows what it feels like. All the best players in baseball. You go through funks and sometimes you just can't figure it out. 2 1. Rice way out ahead. It's a foul ball that bounces to the top of the upper deck here. Off speed. Harper stays with it. Race to the bag. He is out on a close play. Hosmer to Medlin. And the Nationals are gone in the top of the second inning. Chris Medlin now has retired six straight. So then that's the big explosion. Bryce trying to go two for two. Steven Strasburg's last start against the Cardinals he allowed two runs on four hits in the first inning got into some trouble but kept his composure his body language stayed consistent and he responded by getting a Diaz to get out of that jam stranding two runners in scoring position and after the game Strasburg admitted that that's an area that he's improved over the course of his career kind of staying composed. He said that comes with experience and maturing he said it's easy to kind of hit the panic button after allowing a couple early runs but that's not how I want to go about it. If it's not my day it's not my day but I'm going to fight until the end. Thank you Dan with our Coons.com sideline report over two million vehicles sold and counting. Twenty pitches 13 strikes in a long first inning. But he kept the Royals off the board. Now he's going 2 0 on Alex Gordon. There's a lot of that going around right now with the Nets. Uh, Gio Gonzalez, Steven Strasburg. Guys that you used to see get rattled when stuff went wrong behind them. Not the case so far this year. It's part of growing into who you are. Counts back even 2 2. Inside the numbers with Jeep. So Steven in that upper echelon in ERA as is Geo as is Tanner Roark who went into last night's game with a 203. Joe Ross would be number one but not enough innings to qualify. 
I wonder where that 2 2 pitch was. CB Buckner not seeing the breaking ball for Strasburg well yet. Gordon in the series, one for seven, hit by a pitch. He's three for his last 26. Tell you what, those kids that came for Kids Day here have no chance of getting a foul ball. They're like way stuck up in the <laughs> rafters. They tried to get them as far away from the game as they could. Poor Rice guys. almost got him one on the yeah. right side last yeah, day. They're all the way at the top. Strasburg, a changeup on three and two with a six run lead. Strikeout number two. Well, lead doesn't have anything to do with it. You got to pitch your game. And if you think the changeup's the pitch, you pull the string. Look at him filling up the strike zone. Even his. Misses in that were close. Yeah, the command gradually getting better here. Top of the hour, two o'clock here in KC. Four in Chicago coming up after this. Six nothing Nationals. I think for Steven when the command is there here comes the work rate a little quicker. That's just a rhythm. He, he's a rhythm pitcher when he gets into it look out. We saw that in St. Louis the other night gave up the hits early slowed himself down a little bit all of a sudden. Now I have my feel I got my rhythm my mechanics are there and I'm not thinking about anything I could throw whatever pitch I want for a strike. I think more so than any Nats pitcher he's a rhythm guy. Staying right with it, Omar Infante, a good contact man. First career hit against Strasburg. One for seven with that single. There they are. Are they still there? Yeah, they're still stuck. Yoga in the outfield returns in 2016 following Nats Marlins game on Sunday, May 15th. To purchase your special ticket, visit nationals.com slash yoga and unstick these two ladies. Some Nats fans, I see red people. It's easy to see red people here in St. Louis, it wasn't. Gerard Dyson. 0 for 2, a walk, a sacrifice in the series. Absolutely digging the powder blue jerseys today, by the way. Love them. I think more teams should wear the powder blues. The Phillies should rock them every once in a while. Old yeah, it was interesting, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, the Phillies were powder blue on the road. So did St. Louis. I think the Brewers still wear them on occasion. You know, and then that, that color kind of went away and everybody went back to the tr traditional gray. The Royals have ones they were on Friday with gold trim around the Royals and the piping on their shirts because they won the World Series. Adds a foul tip and the counts one and two. And those rival the Nats blue stars and stripes jerseys. There's a fixation with ro royalty here. I mean the Kansas City Monarchs. The NBA team was the Kings. You know the Chiefs next door they're the boss. <laughs> yeah. But the Monarchs Kings Royals they like it here. They like to rock the gold along with some blue. One ball two strikes with an out. Dyson stays ahead, stays alive at least. And of course, the crown scoreboard, a landmark here since this ballpark opened up in 1973. There was talk of a downtown ballpark before they renovated this park, but they did a great job and they, they basically renovated 
Kaufman and Arrowhead for the same price it would have cost to build a new baseball stadium downtown. So the Chiefs got improvements and so did the Royals. And they sit side by side. One and two with one out. So the Royals name originates from American Royal, a livestock show. Yeah. A horse show, rodeo, and championship barbecue competition held annually. I didn't know that. That was really big here Just for a long, long time. Assumed it had something to do with the king. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number three for Steven Strasburg. Well, that's been the go-to pitch so far. The fastball just been pounding the strike zone with it after the leadoff walk to Alcides Escobar. And I think with a six-run lead, well, you don't want to change your game plan too drastically. You can really crack the whip on the fastball today. Drew Butera, 32 years of age. His dad Sal was a big league catcher for nine years. That ball's heading for the gap. Infante being sent by Mike Gershley. No chance for a play at home. And the Royals are on the board. Drew Butera is now four for eight in limited playing time. And fastball up, he got on top, drove it in the gap, perfectly placed. And Jason Worth and Michael A. Taylor trying to get it in quick enough to hold Omar Infante at third. They didn't. Six to one. Alcides Escobar is next. Strasburg walked him leading off the bottom of the first. A five pitch walk. This one not very well hit the center and now Kansas City will have two unless Taylor throws him out and Ramos drops the ball. The hitter ends up at second and it's a six to two game. Fine throw by Michael A. Taylor. Well, he knew he had to catch a run at second base, so maybe with a 6 1 lead and anybody else running, you don't take a chance at the throw getting away and the batter runner getting to second base. But he thought he had a chance, and it looked like he did if Ramos comes up with it. And to Wilson's credit, and he's dropped a number of easy ones, that was not an easy pick. Short hop with a lot on it and a runner on top of him. They're not going away. RBI single by Escobar, second on the throw. Mustakis, the hitter. And the Royals have as many hits now as the Nationals do.
curveball for a strike. Twenty pitches first inning and now twenty four more here. And a bouncer left side Rendon over to cut it. Royals will pick up a couple. The chipping away process has started for them. Now the Nats want to pursue that add on. At home, June 21st last year. There's been a seven run inning this year that famous four home run, seventh at Miami, April 19th. Top of the third, Zimmerman, Murphy, and Worth. Medlin, by the way, 54 pitches of his own first two innings, but only 12 last time. And he had a 1 2 3 second. Catch her reaching for that one strike. One one. Well, it's tough to tell a ball club after they score six in the first that you need to add on. I'm pretty sure they're aware against this ball club they do. Zimmerman hits one extremely hard up the middle. And he's on radar lock right now. Ryan Zimmerman in this series now. Six for 11. He's streaking. Four doubles, two singles. I mean, he, he gets hot like this, and we talk about it. We've talked about it for six years now. I carry a ball club for a month. When he gets locked in, the barrel and the ball become really good friends. And he does a lot of damage, so. Here's Murphy. Doubled down the right field line his first time. Mm. 
There should be some interesting conversations between these two today, C.B. Buckner and Daniel Murphy. Okay, all right. Murphy was hacking early count for that double. That's when you just have a real polite conversation. The last thing you say before you get in the box is, hmm. Well, that one didn't get in there far enough, and Murphy's two for two. That is his 13th multi hit game of the year. Number one in all of baseball. But you know who'd really like Daniel Murphy is the late Tony Gwynn. Because I feel like it, for a month of this season, that's who we're watching. I mean, every time he's up, it's barrel to the baseball. If you pitch him away, he goes that way. If you come in, he pulls it down the line. The line driving it up the middle, all fields, all the time. I don't know how you get him out. So Zimmerman, six for 11 in the series. Murphy six for ten and here's Jason Worth who's three for nine with a couple of RBIs Danny Duffy is up again in a hurry in the Royals bullpen not that they have two runs Ned Yost doesn't want the Nats to get any further away Led by six, now it's a four run difference. Jason Worth now, eight for his last 23 with seven runs batted in. Remember, Murph went with the high pants for the first four games. He lost last night, put his pants back down, trying to start a new streak. Give me some hit speeds, would you? Look at this. I, I got Zimmerman's harder. I request and they give. Look at that. 106. His exit velocity is ridiculous. And 105. I didn't know Murph's was that hard. 1-1. One, one. Pretty good pitch. If I'm going to say the other way, I have to say this way. That's a strike. Jason Worth will take it. The Nets within a pitch of having the bases loaded with nobody out for Wilson Ramos. They're also within a pitch of a 9 2 game. <laughs> Might have been diving for that outside pitch, came back, caught the corner. Three two nobody out. And worth reaching to make contact. Six two nationals, top of the third. Zimmerman and Murphy aboard, and another payoff pitch. I can hear the dugout all at once say, "And a boy!" Anytime you foul off a tough three two pitch, dugout let you know. Adding further to Medellin's pitch count, which was 54 at the start of this inning. 67 now. And that's too far inside. The bases are loaded. 
Carb, I'll ask you this. You've been here a lot longer than me. Have you ever heard a dugout through your headset like we have this year with the chatter, the chirping, the intensity, the enthusiasm they've shown? The answer is no, I no, haven't. It's, it's every pitch. We hear it in our headset. That a boy, way to go. And they come back. I mean, it's just, it's the cool place to be right now in the Nats dugout. I'll tell you that, they're having fun. Chris Medlin is done after two plus. That was the first walk he issued. He struck out two. The Nats already have six runs on six hits. And even though there's a right hander coming up, it's the lefty, Danny Duffy. Call to the bullpen brought to you by the UPS Store. Together, there's nothing we can't solve. Visit the upsstore.com for locations. Thirteenth appearance, second of this series. Yeah, fastball ninety six, slider eighty five, change up eighty eight, but he likes the fastball. He's got a good one. Wilson Ramos, the first net to be retired today, and he's the number seven hitter. Struck out after the Worth RBI double two innings ago. Wilson not in the lineup for that game Monday night when Duffy pitched an inning and a third. Gave up hits to Zimmerman and Murphy, but didn't give up any runs. Wilson Ramos a chance to give the Nats their big lead right back. Four is pretty big, but six is a ton. He's going to take it up and away. Ball two. It's a good math lesson, Cart, for all those kids here today. Four is big, six, six is, is huge. A, six is a ton. He's gone deep twice with the bases loaded career. Zimmerman and Murphy started this with singles. The Worth walk. Ramos swinging on 2 and 0 with a base hit. That'll keep the line moving as everybody moves up 90 feet. And the Nationals lead 7 to 2. And in this series, Wilson Ramos is 4 for 6. Good to have him back. What a Somebody say that was a rocket in Spanish. I don't know. Is Raketa rocket? I don't know. I'd say yeah. I'm going with it. Chance. So here's Clint Robinson. He had a good AB first time. That sack fly. Out to center field. That capped off the six run first. Lefty lefty matchup. You know, I speak a little Spanish from playing winter ball and taking it in school for six years, but anytime I'm stuck on a word, I just add a vowel to the end. Yeah. And I feel like I got it. Good. So we'd like to see a grand slamma. Yeah. 0 1 here. Robinson, he did not stop. Two with nobody out, and he will dump one into left field. Everybody moves up 90 feet again, and 
the Nationals lead eight to two. I mean the line is literally moving one station at a time. Clint Robinson joined the hit parade. Great at bat his first time up. Sack fly to deep center. We need some ice for all the high fives in the Nats dugout today. So right now Chris Medlin responsible for eight runs plus worth at third. Still nobody out here in the third inning with Danny Espinosa coming up. Duffy struck him out Monday. Danny pulled the ball. Batting left handed first time to Hosmer. Turns around to the right side. And Espinosa this year right handed. Two for 18 with an RBI. Pulled the bat back it appeared. No swing. Where'd you say six was what? Four is pretty big. Six is a ton. A ton. So what's I don't know. What's seven or eight? We'll see. Megaton. Danny tried to make it 12 to 2 with that swing. I love it. There's no lingering effect from that punch to the gut loss last night. Came out ready to play from the first pitch. Espinosa in the air, left center. Breeze holding it up a bit. The runner is worth Kane. Here comes Jason. The throws on target, but late, and the Nationals lead nine to two. Nine runs, seven earned, charged against, or rather six earned, charged against Chris Medlin. For Danny Espinosa, RBI number eleven. Jumping right back on after the Royals had scored two. That's a good answer. First and second one out. Here's Michael A. Taylor for the third time. Strike call. Six oh three. I think that's New Hampshire. It's an area code that Nancy put up in the first three innings. Taylor to left. That ball's going to drop. Everybody moves up 90 feet. And Michael A. Taylor checks in with his second base hit of the series. So now all the runners on base are guys that Duffy allowed to reach. And here comes Anthony Rendon with the bases loaded, one out. I'll tell you what you better get your base hits if you're the Nats in this ball game because you're looking at a six a B game. And I think everybody's checked in. Let's see. Well the guy in the box has it and I think that's it. And then Danny Espinosa with the sack fly right there. So two guys trying to join the hit parade right now. Yeah, and they bo both either been on base scored a run or driven in a run. Anthony Rendon reached on the error in the first by Infante popped up to him in the bottom of the second or top of the second as the second out. Rendon up there hacking. Nats have equaled their highest run total of the year. They scored nine against the Phillies April 15th. That was at Friday night in Philly when Michael A. Taylor led off with the homer and they won it nine to one. With 16 hits. Today they have nine runs on nine hits. Rendon up the middle. That is going to be corralled by Infante. They only have one play, and now it's 10 to 2. Rendon picks up his third RBI. Double digits in three innings. 
And we talk about how they score in the first, but they're adding on here. Talk about how they're ready to play. But you got to be ready to broadcast too. I mean, you can't just settle into your seat and say, "Oh, it's a nice day game here. Here comes the It's like boom, 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 breaking stuff down yeah. right away. 604. What area code is that? Yeah. Get up. I don't know. Bryce bounced out, ending the second. So this is his third at bat. He's checked in with a flare to center for an RBI. Ooh, we've moved to British Columbia with the 604. Six oh five would be South Dakota with a base hit right here. <laughs> well, if he clears the bases, we'll put him on Mount Rushmore. I mean, it's ten to two. What else are we talking about? One one to Bryce. Five more hits in this inning. Harper, good take. Didn't look like he went. Field and Colbreth agrees, and the count goes to two and two. We see how he's jumping at the pitcher. It really is. That's the first time I've really seen it. And that's when he gets in his little ruts that usually only take about three or four games. I figured out. Harper, broken bat. Tried to break it. Didn't have a big enough fracture. Ninth national to bat here in the third. Two two pitch. Swing and a miss. The Nats pick up four more runs on five more hits. Coverage of baseball. We start with Jake Arietta of the Cubs, who the Nats are scheduled to see on Sunday. Seven and zero, his last seventeen and zero, his last eighteen starts. Unbelievable stretch of pitching. Justin Verlander of the Tigers scuffling. They lost his first seven last year. 
And Matt Harvey losing last night to Atlanta goes to two and four. And for some reason that sixth inning in the middle of the game is his nightmare. Strasburg 45 pitches 31 strikes. Strike one to Lorenzo Cain bottom of the third underway. Struck him out swinging for the second out of his day. You know I was thinking about we were talking about how we hear the dugout so much this year. Did you think you would hear the dugout this much on this trip. As we did <laughs> in St. Louis and Kansas City. Well yeah you figure. Maybe not that much going on loud crowds. I was going to hear the dugout. I just thought about the loud crowds. Yeah. The fact that we can even hear a dugout in these full houses during the game is shocking. It's Dylan G. Who the Nats knocked around a bit here last night. He got he gave up Worth's homer. Swang and a miss down and away. Wilson Ramos able to corral it and Steven Strasburg has strikeout number four Mercedes Benz will check it out. He struck him out on a slider away last time this time he goes 95 on the black. Power and command from Steven Strasburg. Wilson dropped it but Kane had already vacated the premises. As here, here's Hosmer who singled to right in the first inning. So Steven gives him a first pitch changeup that the hitter thought was a fastball. Hosmer now 34 hits. Murphy has 37. Two of the premier hit men in all of baseball so far right here. Two and one. A bouncer. That's the shortstop coming to get it. On an in between hop, Danny Espinosa picked it up very smoothly. Two down. When you have insight, you know how to handle your finances with confidence. It's all brought to you by PNC Bank for the Achiever and you. Coda Glover, a right hander at Double A Harrisburg. He's a horse out of Oklahoma State, 6'5, 225, and doing the job out of the bullpen at two different levels. Keep that name in mind on his way up, Coda Glover. He's got a good numbers for a horse. 20 strikeouts, four walks. There's Kendry's Morales. Reno. Nets have taken care of the KCDH in the series. One for nine. Hey. Mets winning big today, eight nothing. Cubs are up 5 2 at Pittsburgh trying to sweep. So there's a chance that when the Nats go into Chicago, Washington could be 19 and 8, and the Cubs could be 20 and 6. Got him on the off speed. Taylor came in, now goes back. That ball carrying about 385 feet. Bottom line, it's a 1 2 3 third for Strasburg. He needed that. They call that the little K where the kids get to play some ball while the big boys are on the big night. Double. Triple. Inside the Parker. Run right till they tag you.
Kansas City today. Ryan Zimmerman set to lead off the fourth. Zimmerman has hit a lot of hard ground balls so far this season. His ground ball percentage is at 52% this year, way up from 44%, which is his career average. Dusty Baker saying earlier today, it's all right to hit hard ground balls because there's more hits out there on the ground than there are through the air. But he also said that hard ground balls are probably only a centimeter on the bat away from a line drive and that line drives eventually turn into homers when you're hitting them consistently. So while Zimmerman has been hitting a lot of balls on the ground this year, the Nationals do not uh, have any concern about him offensively. He's been striking the ball hard in this series. He's really starting to turn it around guys. Six hits, four of them doubles. Yeah, RBI double first time up Monday night and his last time up Monday. Last night, third and fourth times up, single and double. And today, Ryan, with a double and a single, he'll be the leadoff man against Dylan G, who came in last night in the eighth inning, gave up a Worth homer and a Ramos double. That's what gave the Nats their biggest lead before the Royals eventually walked them off. Yeah, fastball slider, curveball change, fastball average in 91. Yeah, Ryan's starting to get in that Zim zone. And it's fun to watch. He was in that, what, the last month of the season last year? Maybe two months? Yeah, and he was before he got hurt, too. Nine for 38 with an RBI career against Dylan G. That ball scorched and picked off cleanly by Omar Infante. One out. He is locked in. Murphy. Against a former teammate. You wouldn't mind having Zim as your DH someday, would you, if you're an American all, League team? Not at all. Just stroll up there four or five times, get two or three hits every night. Win the Edgar Martinez Award. See Zim and Worth doing that down the line. Yeah. Murphy, he could be 46 or 47 and be doing that someday. Getting people doubles. Yeah, where's this line drive going? Yeah. 0 oh, 1. And it's not a line drive, it's a big fly. See you later. Murphy, three for three. Three RBIs today. The Nationals lead 11 to 2. And that's his first at bat against the former teammate, Dylan G. Dylan, you went from a, pre a pest to a presence in the lineup. And you heard him say, got him. <laughs> All right. Who is this guy? He's, uh, he's an all star right now. It's unbelievable what he's doing. He's a triple for a cycle, folks, and it's only the fourth inning. It's a big ballpark with big gaps, too. And some trickery in the corners. Murphy now has 38 hits in 96 at bats, and he's batting 396. Worth hits one a mile high on the infield. Infante drifting with the breeze and the baseball. Two outs. Show me that tater again, boys. Like a slider that didn't really do a whole lot of cement mixer. He caught it out front. Listen to it. Click. Wow. Goes the home run. RBIs in six straight games. Home runs in two straight. Wilson Ramos is next, and it's 11 to 2. Offense is cool. It really is. I mean, you want to make baseball exciting again? I think he already has. Yeah, I think so too. Ramos, six career hits against G with a home run, seven career hits against G with a home run. And Wilson Ramos is pounding the baseball. He's two for three today. And in this series, five out of seven. Hard to believe that the first game of the series was Daniel Murphy's first three hit game of the year. It just seems like he's done that before, but he hasn't. And he's got three already again here today. 
And all of this carp against a team that he didn't play great against in the World Series. And as a player, sometimes you have those negative thoughts in your mind and you're thinking, oh, man, they really scuffled against these guys in the World Series. Yeah. Look at Clint Robinson hit one hard. And that's off to the right but side. To his credit, that's not how he thinks. That was last year. This is this year. New team, new year. Yeah, after all of his heroics in the division series in LCS, the Royals held him to three for 20. He didn't walk five times, so they didn't pitch to him in some situations. They struck him out seven times. Robinson takes one up and away. Her ball stays outside. Looked like Butera thought they had a strike. Three and one. So Clint's had a perfect day against his former organization. Sack fly, single, two RBIs. Clint has six RBIs this year. And he has three hits. And now he's aboard again. And that's what we really haven't seen from Clint this year that we saw all of last year that eagle eye walking a lot and the fact yeah. that he went to left field for a hit his last time up and walked this time up tells me that maybe that home run in St. Louis locked him in. He's feeling good about himself and seeing the ball big. It's good to see. So here we are top of the fourth inning and the Nats number nine hitter Danny Espinosa is batting for the third time. 0 for 1, sack fly. Four for 19 career against Dylan G with three walks. Danny gets on. Michael Taylor have four at bats in four innings. That's crazy. Can we get Dan the fountains today? Maybe do a can opener or something. <laughs> I'd like to see a Brooks Brothers belly flop myself. That ball is scorched to right and right at Gerard Dyson. The Nats are swinging it right now. Another run in the fourth as Daniel Murphy goes deep. He has a three for three, three RBI day. That was number four on the air. The fourth inning of Nationals baseball is brought to you by the RAV4 Hybrid. All-wheel drive and unexpected performance. 
Visit ViaToyota.com today. The horses are going around and around like the gnats are going around the bases. Photo finish on the Derby a moment ago. I think it was relish. A little hot dog race. The beat ketchup. Mini dogs. Gordon Infante Dyson. Steven Strasburg coming off a 14 pitch third inning. Strasburg two runs on four hits four K's one walk the walk did not hurt it extended the first inning for a while it's a good breaking ball that just drops sharply right in there backdoor slider commanding that pitch now too. usually starts it in on lefties and breaks it off the pitch play he's throwing it for a strike look out I mean I haven't seen him carp start that slider away from lefties and bring it back. Usually tries to make it look like a fastball in and break it on your hands. Growing confidence in that pitch. One ball and two strikes. Alex Gordon struck out swinging first time. That's a good at bat. And he rifles it past the reach of Rendon. Alex Gordon busting up a three for 27 with that base hit. Second hit of this series. I mentioned it last night not the check swing single he had his last at bat but the fly out to left that he was getting closer because his hands were getting inside the ball. And that was a perfect swing. Omar Infante got their rally started two innings ago with a one out single up the middle later Butera would double and Escobar would single and suddenly it was a ball game at 6 2. The Nats then jumped right back on top with four. In the third and a run in the fourth. Could be two. Murphy bobbles it. Everybody's safe. And Daniel Murphy makes his first error as an at. Might have set himself a, a click too soon, and then when you do that, all of a sudden your hands start to get hard. Just kind of set up early, maybe a tricky hop at the end, tried to stay with it. Gerard Dyson hard guy to double up. Rendon even with a bag at third. Check swing on 91 counts even 1 1. Count pretty high for Steven here early. That was his 71st pitch. Yeah, may 
might take him 90 or so to get through five. One out. Actually nobody out two on here in the fourth. Full count. Nissan will track it. Close, right? Real close. Yeah. Nearly splitting the inside corner there. Another one to Murphy. That one goes well. And Espinosa's got the gun to finish it off against a fast base runner. I'm shocked they turned that. 4 6 3. Ned Yost looking back at his coaches. He can take a look. At least he wants us to take another look. I'm shocked with Dyson's speed and the speed of that ball that Danny Espinosa turned that. The big arm coming across the bag. Did he stumble out of the box? Yes, ah. that's it. I mean, there's no way that that's a double play for Gerard Dyson. But the stumble, Strasburg will take it and a big double play and a guy that you're thinking doesn't hit into too many of them, if ever. Gordon to third, two outs, and here's Drew Butera. RBI double first time. Gets a slider that time, two hopper, Anthony Rendon. Inning ends in a hurry. So Murphy booted one, and then he started a fantastic 4-6-3. Here's our game summary brought to you by Cox the Nats first six batters thanks to two errors and four hits scored in this one Daniel Murphy is all over Kauffman Stadium today needs a triple for that you know what and then Steven Strasburg gets the double play ball got him out of the fourth in a hurry fifth inning Taylor swinging early one out get right to the good stuff with Cox's new contour. Anthony Rendon is next. An 0 for 3 today that has him scoring a run and driving in a run. Rendon career five for 23 a homer two RBIs against Dylan G the longtime Met. 
And a long time gnat killer, and they, they solved him eventually, but you remember that string he had where he was just owning the gnats? They figured him out finally. Into the three o'clock hour here in Kansas City, Missouri, BCFP DK watching a barrage. The Nats have 11 runs on 11 hits. Look out. They have a cutout in the seats over there called the dugout concourse and it went right through there probably all the way out onto the concourse. Yeah. Hopefully everybody all right on that one screaming over the screen and a one two and Rendon stays alive. Royals came home from a West Coast trip to play this series tomorrow they're off and then they go to Cleveland and New York. Short trips on this one but not home for long for their adoring fans who have pretty much packed this ballpark for all three games of the series. Change up up in the zone. Two down. Harris Teeter Family Fun Packs are back, now available Thursdays through Sundays at Nats Park. Get a ticket, a hot dog, chips, and a Coke or Dasani beverage starting at only 15 bucks. Some restrictions apply. Visit nationals.com slash family. Bryce is eight for 22 career against Dylan G. With a couple of home runs, a couple of walks, and four batted in. He's just swinging and missing way more than we ever see him. He's swinging way more than we ever see him. And it looks like he's a little jumpy and maybe trying to pull too much, but hey, he's the MVP. He'll figure it out. Just like when Max Scherzer had trouble with his fastball command. Yeah, he figured that one out. Breaking ball high in the air. See you later. Bryce Harper, a towering drive, 10th of the year, and the Nationals lead 12. To two. I just didn't think he figured out that quick. <laughs> MVP knows what he's doing, folks. Don't panic. We're not. How strong is Bryce Harper? He didn't hit that. Tenth home run of the year. It looked like a fly ball to right. Puts the Nats up by ten. Right away, right away. <laughs> he's pointing to somebody in the stands. Yeah. Guy in the Royals gear probably giving Bryce a hard time in the on deck circle. Here's Zimmerman. Time for that guy to go have a corn dog. That ball went a long, long way. Here's Zimmerman, two for three. The only out he made, a line drive to second base. Opening day was what, April 4th? This is May 4th, so 10 home runs in a month times six. All right, I'm in. Zimmerman to right, pretty well hit. Dyson goes back. That's it for the Nationals, top of the fifth, but they have scored in every inning but the second today. And for Bryce, a long high fly ball. Finally, he arrives at number 10.
players at home. It's not the error because everybody makes them. It's what you do after the error as an infielder that counts. So Daniel Murphy with his first error of the year, the very next hitter hits him a ball, he fields it and starts a double play on a guy you don't think you could turn one on. So, you know, as a young player, sometimes you make an error, your mind starts to speed up, the ball's hit to you again, you make another error, it compounds, next thing you know, you're a mess out there. But for Daniel Murphy right there, that's advanced stuff. You make an error, what do you do with the next ball? You make the play. It's good stuff by Daniel Murphy. And how many shortstops turn that double play? I mean, that was Espinosa screaming across the bag, throwing a rifle shot yeah. to first. The guy in Baltimore. That's that about was it. impressive. Mm. Matt Dendecker gives Bryce Harper the rest of the day off. So Bryce a two for four day with two RBIs. And a tater. Strasburg now in the mid 70s as he enters his fifth inning. 76 pitches, 51 strikes, including this 0 2 to Escobar. And he makes short work of him with a changeup diving at 91. Strikeout number five. McCarp, you'll even see it at the highest level, not as often, but at the minor leagues and the co collegiate level, guys that make one error always, a lot of times, end up making two or three. And the quicker you can turn the page and, and want the baseball after you make that error, say, hit me the ball, give me the ball. I want to seal the deal right here and make a play. That's good stuff by Daniel Murphy. I loved it. Mike Mustakas over two, pop up to third, ground ball to third, fly ball to left field. Wind's going to knock it down a bit, and Rendon's going to get there. Basket catch, two outs. Nice play. Serious range because they were in the shift. Well, you called it, Carp. This looked like it was heading toward the, the stands, and the wind blew it back. Anthony Rendon up by 10 runs, still hustling down there, trying to pick up his pitcher, makes the over-the-shoulder basket catch, and went a long way for that. Was in the shift. Center fielder Lorenzo Kane, front door breaking ball. Strasburg has fanned him swinging twice. Just like that, O2 on another hitter. That's a confused hitter swing right there. He is showing the Royals these changeups in the dirt. Six Ks for Strasburg, three hits for Daniel Murphy in the series. Seven for 11, two homers and five batted in.
Daniel hits Murphy for you. Three today so far. First time up. A double with an error. That scored a pair. Second time up, a lousy single in the third. It was loud, though. Third time up in the fourth. He jumped ship his fourth home run of the year. So double, single, homer. Needs a triple for the cycle. That's a loud box score, folks. Everything going on up and down the lineup. Royals changes here. Jin Ming Wong got the win last night when he got the Nats one, two, three in the ninth, striking out Rendon and Harper. Then they rallied. So he's in for his eighth appearance of the year. Murphy three for three. Or left center for the cycle, huh? You look at where the gap is right now. Lots of room in left center. Looks it all the way in. Murphy is four for four. Hooking that ball into the right field corner. I've never seen a guy come to our ball club offensively and make such an immediate impact. It's just flat out rakes. There's no other way to put it. We've showed you why. Not satisfied with two, he gets three. Not satisfied with three, he gets four. And he's thinking about a five or six hit day right now, standing on first. Grinds every single at bat, doesn't give any away. Daniel Murphy is betting 402. Hey. It was Paulo Orlando who picked up that ball to right field. There's Christian Colon at third, who just came in as well. And there's Orlando. And then Gerard Dyson moves over to center. Lorenzo Kane the rest of the day off. One way to keep thousands of kids quiet at the ballpark. The visiting team scores 12. Jason Worth on base twice, a run driven in, two scored, double and a walk. 13 hits for the Nationals. But with Murphy today, all four hits to right. And we talked about the transition of Daniel Murphy as a hitter and how he's got on the plate. He's looking to do damage. Some of those pitches, Carp, were not inside. And, and why I'm saying he's on top of the plate, he's making away pitches middle, middle pitches in, and he's still able to get to the inside pitch by crowding the plate. He's so comfortable with the no stride, throwing his hands. He's not afraid of the inside pitch. He's not afraid of going to two strikes. So a guy that we've seen go from left field has moved the field all the way over <laughs> just by where he stands. That's got a chance. And Wilson Ramos has another three hit day. Six for eight in two games since returning to the lineup. Got an angel on his shoulder. Using the yard. And Wilson Ramos is now hitting 369. Here's Glenn Robinson, who's had three good at bats today. Sack fly, 
opposite field RBI single and a base on balls. Up the middle another hit for Robinson. Here comes Murphy Bob Henley sends him Dyson no throw and it's 13 to 2. What a day for Clint Robinson in a ballpark where for years wow. he dreamed of playing as a big leaguer and it never quite happened for him. I mean, do you give Daniel Murphy another at bat if you're Dusty Baker? Do you get him off his feet with the tough four game series coming up in a travel day? Give him a chance for the cycle. And the Nets have one spare infielder with the DH using nine guys. That would be Steven Drew. Here's Danny Espinosa. 0 for 2, sack fly, line drive out last time. 13 runs on 15 hits. I need a new pen. It's supposed to be a little chilly at Wrigley tomorrow night. More than a little, and then nice over the weekend. What kind of damage could these bats do in that ballpark? But they're facing really good pitching. That's going to be a circus for four days. These two teams coming head to head, the media, the fans. It's going to be fun. Kyle Hendricks tomorrow night. And then the Nets see John Lackey, Jason Hamill, and Jake Arietta. And circus around Dusty, too. Yeah. I mean that in a good way. Two and O to Espinosa. And he skies one to center. Dyson using his glove for shade. Two outs here in the sixth. So the next five will take us through Chicago. Thursday is an 8 p.m. night game. Joe Ross takes his 0.79 ERA into that. And then day games Friday, Saturday, Sunday before the Tigers come in for some more interleague at Nationals Park Monday night. Day game Friday, day game Friday, day game Friday. I'm going to write it on my hand. Almost missed it last year, remember? You did? Yeah. I was jogging on the lake, and one of my buddies texted me and kept texting me. He's like, Why is it such a weird start time on Friday? I'm like, Oh, no, it's 7 o'clock. He goes, No, I'm seeing it's 1 o'clock. The bus had left. You were already at the park, and I made a mad dash back to the hotel. When you don't ever have day games on Fridays, it's just not in your DNA if you're a baseball player. You're not used to it. 0 1 Taylor chopper to short and the short way for the Royals on a 6 4 so the onslaught continues now the Nats have scored in five out of six innings.
Unusual day to start with for Steven Strasburg. Got his first K on Lorenzo Kane in the first inning after he'd walked the leadoff man. Gordon in the second. Dyson in the second, overmatched. Kane again in the fourth. In the fifth, it was Escobar, and then Kane in his final at bat before leaving the ballgame. In the fifth inning, and it's time for Toyota Case for Kids. Our Washington area Toyota dealers helping children and their families. $37, Strasburg's number for every one of those to the Children's Inn at NIH. Chris Heisey gives Jason Worth the rest of the day off. He's in left field, and Stephen Drew's at third. So Daniel Murphy still in the game. Strike called to Eric Hosmer, who's one for two with a single. How about a pitcher with momentum right now? Well, this is where he usually gets in that rhythm. Fifth, sixth inning. Starts to really settle into a ball game. There's that change up at 90. The change up that you have to gear up for. And the heater pushes him back three and two. Royals box score. Base hit in the first by Hosmer. Infante single. Butera double. Escobar single for their two run second. And only one hit since Alex Gordon lead off opposite field knock in the fourth. Wow pulling the string on Eric Hosmer strikeout number seven and Mercedes now three of the last four swinging strikeouts. Yeah last start he struck out six of the last nine as he went into the seventh inning and I feel like it was all with the change up got a real good feel for it late didn't really show it early to the Cardinals pulled it out last time around it worked. 13 to 2 all those pitchers sitting there going I want that kind of run support. He bolts a fastball to the knees right there. 97 miles an hour sixth inning. Slider wow. 92. A strike for a millisecond before he had to react. 92 mile an hour slider folks we'll let you look at it again watch this. <laughs> and out to right center not that deep. Taylor two outs. Tex Masson's word of the day feel to two nine two nine two for your chance to win an ads prize pack from Masson that's feel. To 29292, it's brought to you by Cox's new contour. Get right to the good stuff. I feel like going to Chicago right now. I feel really good about the 11 run lead. Strike out to Gordon in the second, base hit in the fourth. Osmus. Ned Yost is that Ned Yost just tossed No, it's Eric Hosmer. He's chirping he said okay. you had your say you had your say and he kept going and he threw him out. Yeah he was standing right next to the skipper. He feels like not playing anymore. Osmer still giving it to him. 
He's saying lock in, don't worry about the score. That's what he's yelling at C.B. Buckner right now. Royals have one player left other than Salvador Perez who they don't want to play today, and that's Terrence Gore. Maybe the second strike to Hosmer is what he's worried about. I, I think you know he's the leader of that ball club, and the fact that he's still grinding a 13 to 2 game and yeah. worried about balls and strikes, maybe showing everybody in that dugout that he wants CB Buckner to stay focused. Fly ball to left, and right now it's the guy on the mound. Who is totally focused? Steven Strasburg, how about this? Going back to the double play ball, eight in a row. This one into the seventh. Kansas City. I'm out in the fountain area getting spritzed here. This actually splashes a good bit. Ben Revere, good news for the Nationals. The national center fielder will be joining the team in Chicago. Dusty Baker saying today Revere has been on a rehab assignment with AAA Syracuse. Went three for 16, a walk, an RBI, a stolen base, has been feeling good. So he's going to join the Nats in Chicago tomorrow. He'll get inspected by the team doctors and then the Nats will determine whether to activate him tomorrow or whether they're going to wait a day. But Ben Revere is very close guys to rejoining this 25 man roster. Very good news. Well he's close and so are you Dan. Thanks for that courageous. Report from the outfield. Spritzed. Salvador Perez you saw him he's in the play first. Seventh inning Rendon Harper Zimmerman and if anybody reaches Murphy. And pardon me this is Drew who came in for Anthony Rendon. First to bat of the series for Steven. So Ben Revere back. Nats looking to go five and one on the trip of death. All right. One hopper. Wong's got it. Yusmero Petit, if they decide to stop Strasburg after 95 pitches, he's the kind of guy who could pitch the rest of the game. Steven, 95 pitches, 65 strikes. His next start would be Monday against the Tigers.
So it's Matt Dendecker. Came in to replace Bryce Harper in the bottom of the fifth in right field right after Bryce had gone deep for his second hit and RBI of the day. Jin Ming Wong, the former Nat. Nat ball over to the left side for Cologne. Two outs. Don't forget about those peanuts. They're back in town tomorrow. Four game deal through Sunday. Kids run the bases Friday. Saturday fireworks. Salute to moms on Sunday. And to get your tickets, visit PotomacNationals.com. Do you hear what they're doing today? Yeah, playing a couple of games in lieu of a triple header. A triple header. They're continuing a game from the fifth inning, and they have a double header, two sevens. So they're playing 19 innings of baseball today against Lynchburg. And this one out to left field. Ryan Zimmerman is three for five. Locked in. We need a triple to top this day off right here. Here's Murphy. Left center is where it's at, too. Strike two, oh, and two. Four, oh, two. Twenty seven games into the season. Target in. And of course, the Nats all time cycles. Brad Wilkerson, 05, most recent Christian Guzman. Guzman, the only one at <laughs> Nationals Park. Look at a truck trying to channel a triple here. I like it. That sinker from Chen Ming Wong, if he starts one down the middle and it starts to fade away, that left center field gap is as big as I've seen it against any hitter this series here at Kaufman. Two two. Target away. Murphy left center. Ball hanging in the air. Dyson will get there. That's it for the Nats in the top of the seventh. He could get another at bat in a 13 2 game.
Copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. <laughs> Drove four hours and got to see Bryce hit a home run in his last at bat of the series back in the fifth inning. The Nats are on top 13 to 2 out hitting the Royals 16 to 5. Yasmero Petit hasn't pitched in a while. He could go the rest of the way. Yeah, fastball side of curveball change. Fastball averaging 88. Opponents hitting 178 against the Nats right hander. Two Royals all time have hit against him. One is Omar Infante. 0 for 3. The other, Salvador Perez. Right in there. Two balls, one strike. So the Cubs beat the Pirates today, six to two. They will have 20 wins when the Nats get there. Heisey takes care of that one out. Come out to the ballpark on play ball weekend May 14th and 15th Nats celebrate all forms of youth baseball and softball for more information on play ball weekend activities and to get your tickets visit nationals.com slash tickets. Hot shot right side right there Clint Robinson Dyson gone two outs in the seventh. Here's Drew Butera. One for two with an RBI double. Nationals, by the way, talked about this Monday night. Won two out of three here three years ago. All time, nine and three against the Royals. So this could be 11 and four by the end of this series. Dendecker waiting for that fly ball. And Yusmero Petit, he'll have plenty left in the tank for the last two innings after that quick one, two, three.
Basketball on Matson brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. Proudly serving the armed forces and their families for over 80 years. Federally insured by NCUA. These fountains, Central Kansas City, right by the Country Club Plaza. Beautiful part of town, Midtown KC. And we're going to the top of the eighth inning. Another Royals pitcher. It'll be their fifth of the day. Terrence Gore, first of all, will replace Alex Gordon in left field. And he'll be batting sixth. And there's Govin Herrera who takes over here in the eighth. Yeah, fastball average in 97 for Herrera. Slider 83. Occasional changeup at 89. Opponents hit 196 against the Royals right hander. I'll tell you what, all the Nats fans that made this trip, we need to bring them on all the trips, don't you think? <laughs> I mean, they've been good luck starting in St. Louis, coming here to Kansas City. And a lot of them, I think most of them are going to Chicago that I've talked to. They got hits and wins in them. Got to keep them. Here's Chris Heisey. So every extra player other than Jose Lobatone has been used by the Nationals and the Royals now have used all of their guys getting Gore in there. Herrera 14th appearance this year 12 innings nine hits no runs 17 strikeouts couple of walks. Heisey waited for that one hits it well to left. Just short of the track, Terrence Gore pulls it in. Chris Heisey having some great ABs. It's looking like the Nats are going to go five to one on this five and one on this trip. And the first day in St. Louis, Carp, you remember I mentioned Kurt Reeder stopped by. Well, he was Dusty Baker's lucky charm in San Francisco. And there was one start where Kurt Reeder was covering first at AT&T Park, and he saw something on the ground, and it was a twenty-dollar bill. And he picked it up during the game and he ran the dugout and he handed it to Dusty Baker and he's the guy that did all the pools for the Giants and won all the pools for the Giants. We thought they were shady. But collusion. He was a guy that went out and competed every fifth day and won games and you'd scratch your head saying how did he win. And he's a guy whose nickname was Woody because he looks like the character from the Toy Story with the big ears. So Dusty after losing three of the Phillies called up Woody who lives by St. Louis and said hey come down we need some good luck. There's no way that Dusty thought that Woody would have a five and one road trip in him when he came to St. Louis. But almost, that's just, almost six and he, oh. Dusty was having the players in the clubhouse rub Woody's ears <laughs> before the first game in St. Louis. And he was walking around saying, hey, come here, come here. This guy's good luck. I want you to touch oh, his ears. That's what man. he used to do. And he used to be a good luck charm. So I've been getting text messages from Kurt Reeder this whole road trip saying, ah, that was easy. Strike out, two down. And he was. I mean, he worked fast. He threw 88 and just competed and won ball games. If you know the Flying other team, to Chicago. if he gave up two, you know, we'd score three. No, it, it's all he needed to do was show up in St. Louis. That's how lucky he is. He has had a horseshoe like Dusty follow him around his whole life. Clint Robinson smashes the ball again. This time they get him. First time he's been retired in five plate appearances. Bottom of the eighth. It's all Nats by 11.
Wrigley. The Windy City, north side, home of the Cubs. Boy, they've done a great job renovating the old yard, and Joe Ross has done a great job for the Nats. 0.79 ERA. Beat the Cardinals on a run in six innings last time out. Cal Hendricks is one and two with a three and a half ERA for the Cubbies. We'll get you going with Nets Extra tomorrow night, 7.30. We'll join you from the ballpark, 8 o'clock Eastern. First pitch from Hendricks shortly thereafter. No fountains, just green scoreboards, Ivy, and baseball. And two really, really good ball clubs. Oh, that'll be rocking tomorrow night. Rocking. Here's Jasmero Petit against Alcides Escobar. And meanwhile, the specter of a three inning save is looming in a 13 to 2 game. He only threw seven pitches, five strikes last inning. Are you as surprised as I am that in a 13 to 2 ball game that this place is still pretty much full. Nobody has left. Well some people have but I mean yeah. it's still a big crowd here. I was told over 15,600 kids are here today. I mean, so maybe the bus drivers are still having lunch and this is they want to keep all the kids together. I think a lot of the kids have gone. It's just I mean some true fans here. Hanging out in a 13 to 2 game. You know, it's a great baseball town that suffered from 1985, the end of that season, until two years ago when they finally made postseason. I mean, they didn't even make it during that entire time, and boy, has it come up big in KC. Four in a row for Petit, striking out Escobar. And we invite you to join Johnny Holiday and Ray Knight. And Ray is probably chomping at the bit to talk about this offense. It's the Nats Extra Post Game Show, presented by W.B. Mason when this one is over. But I'm sure Strasburg will be the subject of conversation as well, riding his ship in big fashion after a, a bit of a rocky start, 45 pitches in two innings. Strike one to Christian Colon, the third baseman. Then Paulo Orlando, the right fielder in this inning. Royals giving some of their guys a blow. And their closer needs work. Wade Davis hasn't pitched in this series, and they're off tomorrow. So we'll see him get some work in in the ninth inning. Fly ball, right field, Den Decker. Two outs. The Royals have one hit since the second inning. Strasburg retired his last eight. And that's five in a row for Petit. Oh, I feel like the Nats have set the tone for the day and that the Caps are going to score 13 goals <laughs> They'd hate to give up two, but they'd like to score 13. <laughs> It's gonna be the same final against the Pens. Yeah, 13 to two. I'm calling it right I'll now. Tell you what, if you if you're right on this one, yeah. I'm going to Vegas. No, I can't skip Chicago. Scratch that. Chicago's better than Vegas. There's a Caps fan. There's one in the ballpark. Our guys will find it. Actually, those guys I met in St. Louis, they're three buddies that played high school baseball together that circled this trip last year and they're making the whole trip. Going, they were in St. Louis, they're here and they're going to Chicago tonight. Well done, gentlemen. Yeah. Good guys. Good fans. 0 2, swing and a miss, and Petit another quick inning. Strasburg to Petit, and the Nats to the ninth. It's a blowout in KC.
Kansas City. One inning stands between the Nationals and a so far five and one road trip. And the Royals closer Wade Davis as mentioned 30 years of age needs some work. Hasn't appeared in this series. 11th game of the year he is eight for eight in save opportunities. Yeah fastball 94 and he does have a nasty cutter it's 92 curveball to go with it. Wants it in 100 against the Royals right hander. Danny Espinosa faces him for the first time. Then Michael A. Taylor and Stephen Drew. Mets won today. So right now the Nats about to go a game and a half up again. Look at the Phillies at 19 and 9. The fighting Phils five over. So they gave up 10 runs one night in St. Louis and shut them out one nothing the next day. It's baseball, huh? It is. Espinoza. Straight back over our heads into the upper deck. That was Nola last night. Aaron Nola is dealing. And look at the Cubs and look at the games behind now for the rest of the division. They just swept at Pittsburgh. And I noticed the Cubs. You know the Nats about to go 11 and 4 on the road. The Cubs are 13 and 3 on the road. Just dominating people. Collision course, two heavyweights. Look, I'm already doing the tease for tomorrow for you. Espinoza. And that is to the left side for Cologne. I tell you, somebody missed the boat on the Sunday night game this week. Yeah, no kidding. Yankees have lost six in a row. So tomorrow, 7.30 Nats extra, Joe Ross, 3 and 0, 079. Kyle Hendricks, 1 and 2, 352. Nats will see him for the third time ever. Taylor today one for five reaching on an air first inning scoring and then a single in the third. I mean it's only the two best teams in the National League with Jake Arrieta against Bryce Harper. I know but it's, but it's the Red Sox <laughs> and the Yankees FP. Don't you understand. I don't. And they just played Sunday night. So that's a busted bat fly ball to left. Two outs. Steven Drew again. Who has a little history against Davis. 0 for 6. I'll tell you what the Nats don't want to play in that game. You get home at 2 in the morning. Takes you two or three days to regroup. And that curveball just dropping outside. One ball, one strike. Another one, and it's right in there, one and two. Blake Trinan for the ninth. And he uh, has family here from nearby small town Kansas. He went to Baker University for a while, which is in Baldwin City, Kansas, about well, less than an hour southwest of here. He's got family in the ballpark. Dusty thinks about stuff like that, too. Yeah. It's not far fetched.
two balls two strikes. That one right in front of Davy Lopes. Nationals came into this game with a plus 39 on the run differential plus yeah 39 so that thing will really shoot up into the plus 50 range second to the Cubs and that's pretty well hit by Drew out to right but Orlando is there and the Nationals put 13 runs on 16 hits on the K's board today. Three outs to get to make this a wonderful road trip so far at five and one. Yeah, there's some Blake Trine and family and friends. Osage City, City, Kansas, where he's from, is south of Topeka, the state capital, probably about an hour and a half from here. And then he went to a small school in Baldwin City called Baker University. So here he is. By the way that's a town at the 2000 census was just over 3000 people Osage City and there's the sinker low and away as they get a look at Salvador Perez I mean they love this guy so much when he came into the game in the seventh inning and Stephen Drew hit a ground ball to the pitcher. They went nuts when Perez caught the throw. Yeah. Rock star. And well deserved. So things you think about in the 13 to 2 game, are you ready for this? Okay. If, if you're facing the Nats and they score all those runs in the first inning, start your closer against them and then bring your starter in the first inning or the second inning and then use your setup guy as the closer. It's it's a reasonable thought. Not really, but it's just things you're thinking about in the third. I bet Tony Larusa would try. That. Yeah, I mean they score all the runs in the first, so bring in your big hairy guy that throws a hundred in the first inning. Game over. Huh? Game over. <laughs> <laughs> then your then your starter can cruise through seven, and then you hand the ball to your setup guy. Genius, pure genius. Or not. Trying and walks his first man. Just holding on to that hard sinker. Blake probably amped Dan pitching close to home. Yeah, Bob, I was just going to say the same thing. I talked to Blake yesterday about being back near his hometown, as you said, about 90 minutes away. He actually grew up a big Royals fan, and obviously he doesn't really root anymore, but he said that he does still hold a soft spot in his heart for the Royals. He 
told me he'd find it pretty neat to get into a game here at Kauffman Stadium. Only came here a few times as a kid just because it was tough to get the whole family out here, but uh, would find it to be a pretty cool experience to be on the mound here, and here he is getting it done. Facing Kendrys Morales. Yeah, he's the only major leaguer to ever come out of Osage City High School. There they are. And they were red. The training in spins. Ball two. Got a strike, got a chopper, and it just goes foul. I think made a right turn on the last hop before the bag. Right now, the Nats have scored 120 runs this year, and they've given up 70. Well, you've been doing math all day. You said four was good and six was a ton. What's what's that difference there? 11 is a winner. If you're up 30 in the run differential, yeah. you should be in first place. Math with Bob. Swing and a miss. Heartbreaking ball in the dirt. So 120 to 70 is 30? No, I was <laughs> 50. 50. <laughs> You got me going in too many directions here. <laughs> Bootleg math with Professor Bob. I did. I was here for two years in college and did not take one math course at UMKC. Yeah. Don't have to tell me that. That's why we're sitting here. Sometimes even when Blake gets that sinker up a bit, they still swing over the top of it. This is Terrence Score came into play left field in the eighth inning. We saw his amazing speed when he came in in the bottom of the ninth and stole second last night. After the hit by Perez. That's a strike. One and two. in there with a slider two outs that'll bring in Omar Infante the Nats about to go 11 and 4 on the road Five and one in interleague play. And five and one on this trip. It could have been six and oh. Very close to being that. Even for the most positive guy, I did not see that coming. Into right, Dendecker right there, and the Nats win another series in Kansas City like they did three years ago, taking two out of three, Osage City, Kansas, and the guys following the Nats loving it.
And it's a 13 to 2 win as they out hit the Royals 16 to 5. All right. Two out of three taken care of.